Hello everyone, I hope you're doing well. Uh, today I'm going to talk about Swarmer, and that is a mach another machine that is within the Digitone 2. And I'm going to start by uh, just playing some chords of a string patch that I made uh, using Swarmer. So here we go. Lots of reverb. <laughs> um, uh, speaking of lots of reverb, so um, I want to go into uh, show you a quick trick um, that I use. Um, one thing you can do with a delay is you can send the delay into the reverb, and if you use a, a fairly high feedback, meaning that it repeats a lot, um, you can use that to get really long tails. And e even if you turn the reverb uh, decay quite a bit down, you can still get really long tails. And that's kind of gives you another way of getting some tonal variety and also getting some almost sounds like modulation where, you know, you have some movement to it. Um, the feedback parameter on the delays on electron boxes, just be careful with it. Uh, it's, it's very aggressive and you can, um, you can uh, just be careful, you know, when you turn it up, especially past you know, the, um, you know, the north position, if you keep going, just make sure you know what you're doing because it can, it can really get loud quickly. Um, all right, so um, let me show you how I made this track. So um, this is actually playing two instances of Swarmer, but it's not using Unison. What it's using is track layering. So on both the Digitone 1 and the 2, you can layer tracks. So in here, you go into Setup, which is Function Filter button, and there's a label that says Setup. And you can go in there and you can go into Track Layering. And you can see that on Track 9, I have Track 10 uh, se selected you know, to layer. So in this case, um, any note that I play on Track uh, 9, if I just hit the trig, you'll see Track 10 light up. And so this is a way that you can um, layer voices, and sometimes this is a more interesting way than um, unison, because in this case, you know, I just pitched up one of them really high. So I'm going to turn the track layering off, so that that way we can go through and um, show, just show you each individual layer. So I'll turn this one off. So now if we play this one, I play a chord. Okay. That's the lower end, and I'll play the same chord here. So those were the highs. So I just put those together. Um, all right, so let's go through the parameters of Swarmer. It's a it's a very easy to use uh, machine, actually. Um, even though it has um, a lot of applications and things you can do with it, it's also, like I said, it's very approachable because it's one page, so you can just sit down and you know, we can go through these pretty quick. All right, so the first parameter that we have is um, tune. All right, so we can do that. And let me turn off the effects, because <laughs> I'm sure you want to hear the pure tone of this, not a bunch of my effects here. So let me actually do that for both of these tracks. All right. Okay, so come back to this guy. All right. Okay, tune. Okay, right? Um, the next thing, the next parameter is the wave shape for each of the sub oscillators. So you can, um, this is really cool because in Swarm, which is a machine that is within Syntact, um, this has the ability that Swarmer, which is the successor, 
is the one that has the ability to set the wave shape for the sub oscillators. So let me show you what that sounds like. So there I'm doing a triangle wave. So I have for the main wave, I have the uh, sawtooth and then I have a triangle wave, which is a lot softer. Okay. Let's leave him towards the, um, well, let's actually, no, I'll leave him there. All right. Let's change the main wave next just so you can hear the difference. Now they're both triangles. Now the main wave is a sine wave, which is very subtle, but also useful. It's cool that this can be very subtle now. Like one of the, my favorite things is to put something that has a little bit of um, harmonics in it for the, for the main and then set the sub to be um, just using sine waves, which I think is a really cool thing. I mean, typically most people will crank it up to super saw and, uh, and use it like that, right? But um, let's listen to the uh, square wave, which is another really nice thing to have. So that's the sub oscillators with a square. So that's a square on both. Okay, the next parameters uh, that I'm going to go through are changing the sub oscillators, um, both volume and how detuned they are. So if let me turn them off. So that's just the square wave on the bottom. So you can adjust the volume that way. And then you can adjust the detune. And if it's all the way detuned, you can see why it's called swarm. <laughs> Then in the lower left, there's a setting to set the main octave, which is the, the main wave that's playing. So I can move him. So now he's playing the same octave. Okay, now I'll move him to a sawtooth just so you can hear him. And then I'll move him down one octave, which is where we were. And then you go down two octaves. So I can give a really nice sub bass tone in there. Okay, the next parameter is animation, which is, if I turn it off, it probably is going to sound similar, but if I crank it all the way up. So what's happening here is everything is being, um, let me turn the detune just closer. This is another way to kind of get that swarm sound is, so animated is really, an animation is animated detune. So if you imagine it as they're, you know, they're drifting, you know, they're going in and out of tune and they're moving. That's what the idea is. And where the detune up above is a fixed, you know, detune for each of the sub oscillators. So there's kind of two ways to get the movement that you want. And then the last parameter is uh, the noise mod. So let me turn that all the way up so you can really hear it. Okay. And then let me turn it down to where it probably just adds some character. Like right in there, you can still hear the, the notes. So let me play a chord here. So, okay. And then let me play it without noise. Turn the noise up a little bit higher and then let's hear it again. There you can really hear it. So noise is one of those really interesting parameters because it can add a little bit of grit and texture to things. And you just gotta kind of find that sweet spot. It's a little hard to show in a YouTube video because the sweet spot is just, just on the edge of audible where you just hear a little bit of texture. It just adds just a little bit of grit, which is really nice. So it's a great parameter to have on any synthesizer. Um, Okay, so that's kind of it for Swarmer. I mean, it has, um, uh, it's one page, really easy to work with. Uh, you can get huge tones, um, obviously. Uh, but let me, um, I'm going to do one more uh, quick example. We're just going to have a chord pattern that's playing. Um, okay. And then this is for doing like, um, just kind of like techno chords, like if you want to hit something. 
Um, you can see my amp envelope, I have a really long attack, so let's get rid of that. something like in, the, in that sort of range. Um, I love the low pass four filter. Um, um, it's, um, I mean, it's in both the Digitone one and Digitone two, but I really like it. So that's, um, that's the one I use, use a lot. Um, and for this, um, one thing you'll note is that when you hear it play and it's bouncing between um, left and right, I'm not using any effects to do that. Um, it's another trick. All I did was I just took these two trigs here, I held them down, I went into the amp page, and you can see I just tweaked it you know, to the left side, and then I went to the other one and tweaked it to the right side. A reason why I do this is that it's, it, 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 not, it sounds interesting, but also it's an um, easy way that when you add delay that has ping pong, you get lots of really nice uh, stuff going on. So let me help, maybe, maybe I can show that real quick. So let me add some delay onto this guy. Let me turn off the, I have the reverb cranked, and we're going to put the left and right very wide. And we're going to go down to a dotted eighth, so you're going to get that weird sound for a second. Alright, let's hear this. Yeah, that's what I want. Okay, so that was just to show that, um, and let's play with some of the um, settings while that's rolling. So you can just hear that when you push this through a filter, you can get lots of different tones. Uh, did I? Wait a minute. Let me check something. Okay, good. I want to make sure I turn that layer off. <laughs> but you can hear, even with this guy, I mean, you can just get lots of really nice, rich tones uh, with the um, with Swarmer. And another note about uh, Swarmer and, and layering is that I did a video that showed wave tone, and wave tone can also get really good kind of almost analog, you know, V8 kind of sounding stuff. And you could use the same trick with the layering to put... Uh, a wave tone on top of Swarmer uh, to get different, you know, tones. And you can, uh, obviously that might be good for a lead or something where you want to make it a little more punchy. Um, you can also even layer in something that has just the attack, you know, so you just get this really plucky kind of moment in there. Um, so a lot you can do with uh, track layering. And so anyway, I'm going to stop the video there. So if you have any uh, questions, let me know. And I hope this was helpful. Take it easy. Bye.